doing well. Um, I'm going to uh, double check that everything is streaming where it should be. I'm also going to increase. We got some intimate lighting here today. Um, if you are watching, let me know in the chat where you're coming from. Lighting here. And uh, oh, there we go. Perfect. Um, all right. So I'm live on YouTube. I don't know how to know if I'm live on LinkedIn, but that's okay. Uh, that was just kind of an experiment anyway. So if you're watching, let me know in the comments where you're coming from, what you're, who you are, where are you from, and uh, what you're most excited to learn about today. Uh, all right. The Happy Pill Podcast from Calgary, Calgary, Alberta. Thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. Uh, if I sound a little wheezy or anything like that, uh, I just learned I have strep throat. So uh, I talked to my doctor, though. It's not contagious through the webinar. So uh, I'm feeling pretty good. And I, I wanted to. I was really excited about this. So um, but so thank you all for being here again. If you're joining, if you're coming in, uh, let me know. We'll give people a couple of minutes to trickle in. Um, and in the meantime, if you um, if if you are let me know if you're like an automation novice or if you have automated before. Uh, the Happy Pill podcast is saying, I uh, just really need to know how to make things simple, get better soon. Thank you very much. I really, um, I was like, should I tell people that I have strep throat? But I feel like as I'm talking into a microphone now, it's pretty obvious that uh, I have something. So why not? Um, all right. So we are a couple minutes in here. Again, as people are coming in, let me know. Oh, I should also double check my email. Um this is why I need like a virtual assistant to uh, to have the second screen up for me. Make sure no one's coming through in my email saying like, hey, I can't make it. Um, now, if you are watching and you need to dip out, don't worry. This will be available for uh, 48 hours after the event. Um, and you'll learn more about what happens when it comes uh when it comes through um, into the playbook, it'll get into the playbook, so you'll learn more about that. Uh, Beth, thanks for joining, saying uh, watch out for that strep throat untreated. It can become rheumatic fever. I uh, have started a regimen of amoxicillin something something today. So uh, amoxicillin plus a steroid. So uh, thank you, Beth, for that. I realized, you know, I, realized um, I had a sore throat for a few days, and I was like, this is worse than any any sore throat I've had before. So, um, but yeah, so I'm going to do this and then I'm going to rest up. So let's get into this. I will try to keep an eye on the chat every so often as well. Um, but let's dive into the uh, actual uh, the webinar. All right. So automating your podcast workflows. So first I want to tell you about the Jetsons versus the Flintstones. Um, I used to watch this as a kid on reruns. Uh, they were both, I learned later, like pretty short-lived shows um, as far as their original runs. But they were Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Uh, they they did some crossover events, right? Um, the Jetsons went back in time, stuff like that. So the reason I want to point this out, though, is because... One of the big differences you see between the Jetsons and the, and the Flintstones is that the Jetsons are living, I think it's in the year 2065, um, and or maybe it's 3065, but uh, they have robots like Rosie who do a bunch of stuff. They have uh, these autonomous um, um, anthropomorphized like vacuums and um, other like robot filing cabinets and things like that, they have made their life easier by creating new inventions. Uh, now compare that with the Flintstones, right? So you can see with the Flintstones, uh, they have also made their lives easier, but they have done so by using the things that are currently available to them. So uh, it looks like they have like a woolly mammoth that is watering their yard. They have a um uh in a herbivore dinosaur mowing their lawn uh and then they have um 
you know, a few other animals that are serving as the dishwasher. So they are taking the uh, things that are readily available to them and leveraging them to make their lives easier. Now, uh, I'll say like, you know, as far as animal stuff goes, let's just, the animals talk in the Flintstones as well. So um, we can we can assume that these are uh, well-paying jobs that uh, the animals opted into. But the point is that you can leverage the tools you have today to make your lives easier. You don't need to code up some new uh, fancy website or application to do the things you want to do. And that has n that has never been more true. Uh, the no-code revolution is in full swing. And things that I used to be able to do as a programmer a lot of people can do without code. And that's the, that's what I have. Um, that's the approach that I have also taken because I, uh, you know, I love writing code, of course. Um, oh, Beth coming and saying the Jetson set in 2062. Thank you, Beth. Um, so I have, uh, I have written code before and if I don't need to spend my time uh, in, in my code editor, um, then I'd rather not. I'd rather use tools like the ones we're going to look at today. So you can leverage the tools you have to make your life easier. And this is especially true of podcasting, I should say, right? You're here because you want to start a podcast or you have a podcast and you're spending too much time on that podcast. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do to make podcasting easier. So the goals of this webinar we are going to define what automation is because I think automation can be a scary term for some people. I think people hear the words uh, like the word automation and they think they need to be incredibly tech savvy. I don't believe that's the case though. Uh, then I'll give you a framework for deciding what to automate and then we'll take a look at some automation tools. And again, be sure to ask questions along the way. I'll be monitoring the chat. Um, as we go along. So I want you to internalize this slide. You don't need to do everything for your podcast. I know that people struggle with the things that they do and they believe that only they can do them, right? I do these five things for my podcast and nobody else. My system is so unique that only I can do it. That is not going to be true like 99% of the time. Obviously, if it's your podcast and you're the host, it needs to be your voice, but somebody else can publish your podcast, right? Or as we'll learn, robots can do a lot of the stuff in the background for you. So this is like the, the first mental mo um, model that I want you to break. You don't need to do everything for your podcast. And this is where automation comes in. So what is automation? Now, there's a lot of different definitions. Uh, they, all use, they all seem to use this key phrase that I'll mention in a second. But the way that I define automation is automation is using tools to do things so that we don't have to do those things. And even with this definition, I'm sure you can probably think of some things you're automating. So if you are using a tool to do something that you don't need to do, let me know in the chat. Let me know. Maybe it's um, like automated bill pay, right? Or maybe it's Google Maps, right? Maybe you're using turn-by-turn -turn based directions to get somewhere. That's a form of automation because you are not figuring out how to get there. You are using robots to guide you to where you need to go. So this is what I want you to think about. Uh, so again, let me know in the chat, are you, what is maybe a simple form of automation that you are doing? Automation is using tools to do things so we don't have to. And here are a few examples that I just gave, right? Uh, automatic bill pay. I think this is probably a form of automation we're all doing, right? Maybe we've missed a water bill and our water got turned off. Uh, and we thought, hey, I don't want that to happen again. 
Um, and so we now have it automatically taken out of our bank account every month, every quarter for me. Uh, sending a PDF when someone joins your mailing list, right? Imagine having to do this manually where if someone joins your mailing list, you have to send them the lead magnet manually. No, our, our email service provider is going to handle that for us. And we can configure all of that in the back end, right? Uh, Stripe, sending money to your bank account automatically. You don't have to think about that. And the, I know that's great because have you ever, uh, first of all, just seeing money in your bank account is nice, right? Oh, I, I wasn't expecting that to be there, right? But um, recently I uh, went to my PayPal account and saw like an extra 500 bucks sitting there. And that was exciting, but also that was money that could have been in my account like two weeks ago. So, like, the fact that Stripe does it automatically is a lot better for me. It's better for my bookkeeping and everything. Uh, or even an email autoresponder, right? So, you go on vacation or you're out of office because you are you have strep throat. And uh, you want to let your uh, friends and colleagues know that you're probably not checking email. An email autoresponder is a simple form of automation. So, those are a few things uh, that are automation examples and uh let's go back to the chat uh let's see chat gpt there's so much for me to learn honestly i don't have much automated uh this is from the happy pill podcast well i'm glad you're here then but i'm willing to bet right if we if you look at some of the things we just talked about um there's probably something that uh that is being done automatically for you um I mean, even with your podcast, right, you have you submitted it to directories once, but you don't have to submit every episode of your podcast, right? So that also is a form of automation. So um, and I'm, the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to start thinking about, um, sorry, I'm bringing up the live chat here. Um, I want you to start thinking about this in terms of that it's not, some big complicated thing that only programmers or only tech savvy people can do. So, um, but yeah, I think I'm, I'm glad you're here because we're going to cover a lot of ground in the next 50 minutes or so. So before I mentioned that all of the definitions that I looked at, uh, highlighted, um, this similar phrase, minimizing human input. Right. Um, and, if we look at the examples that I just went through, uh, this is exactly what we're doing when we automate, right? We're minimizing the human input for me to have to pay my bills on time. We are minimizing the human input of uh, having to send a lead magnet manually to people. And the, re the way this is done, and we'll cover this later too I'll, when I talk about uh, kind of the process for how automation works uh, is we have two things. We have a trigger. This is the inciting event. This is the thing that kicks off the automation. And then we have actions. And the actions are the thing um, that we want to happen when an automation kicks off. So the trigger in an automatic bill payment might be a new bill comes due, right? So, um, in, in the case of my water bill, uh, I get a new bill added to my account. It's due on the first of the month. On the first of the month, uh, the system is triggered and then kicks off the action of uh, withdrawing the money from my bank account. With the email lead magnet, the trigger is someone joining the mailing list. The action is emailing them the PDF. So those are triggers and actions, and those are the basic uh, terms that we want to think about when it comes to automation. So let's talk about getting into the automation mindset because this does take um, this this does uh, take a little training, right? Uh, the way you think about things. Um, I think one of the things that makes uh, me an adept automator is the fact that I've been programming for twenty plus years. And so I think how machines think, 
but you don't have to necessarily do that. Um, it looks like we've got uh, Rob in the chat here. Rob, uh, Dune, I want to say Dunewood. Uh, I hope I said that right. Um, automate guest intake with Calendly, Zapier, and Airtable. This is exactly what I do. This is one of the automations that we'll be walking through. Um, the only difference is that I recently changed it from uh, Zapier to Make. So, um, yeah, that's a great automation. I think that's a really great place to be, and it's one of the more complicated aspects of podcasting. And so taking more of that off of your plate is awesome. All righty. So getting into the automation mindset. Real talk, you can automate pretty much everything. I know this because there was a period when I first started automating where I thought, oh, well, instead of doing this manually, uh, I'll just I'll just make an automation for it. But you don't want to do that and you shouldn't do that. I'm going to give you like four criteria later, but the thing you should think about, the main thing that you should think about is, is it going to take me more time to build the automation than this saves me, right? So if it's going to take you 10 hours to build the automation and it's only saving you an hour, well then no, it's not worth it, right? Uh, unless you do that thing 11 times, Okay. Um, and so when you're thinking about what you should automate, here are the four things that I recommend. Things that are common and easily repeatable. Okay. So, um, guest sign up is, uh, is a, a great example of that. People are always going to, you're, uh, unless your podcast is like five episodes long or you only have five guests in a lifetime people are going to regularly sign up to be guests on your podcast. And your process for that should be easily repeatable. So automating that is a great candidate for uh, automation. Or on the other side of the coin, infrequent but a high level of effort, right? So if you do something like once every six months, but it takes you several hours to relearn how you did it the last time and then like oh connect all the things that you had to reconnect and figure out exactly how you did it automation is probably going to be a big time saver there so uh, an example of this is my friend brian richards um does sponsor outreach for his virtual events uh i think it's either quarterly or every six months and he has this big automation uh, that pulls a bunch of stuff from Airtable and then builds contracts and then builds the invoice. And it's all put together based on an intake form. This is great for him because he has a very system systematized process for that. Uh, it's something that I would like to do in the future, but my process recently changed, right? And it, mine used to be like that where... Oh, just like select the number of episodes you want. I'll create the invoice. I'll create the insertion order. Once the insertion order is signed, you get a contract. Or I'm sorry, you get an invoice, right? And so, um, but mine's changed a little bit. And so now I need to rethink the automation. But for Brian, it's perfect, right? Because every six months, he doesn't have to think, oh, how do I put together this contract? And what was I using? And now how am I invoicing these people, et cetera? Uh, number three is specific timing is required. So uh, think about, again, the the lead magnet, right? You want to you want to make sure that people are getting that lead magnet um, right when they sign up and not like days later because you want to establish trust. This is all a trust building exercise. The same thing goes for uh, when people sign up for my membership, right? They get access to a private feed. And if I had to do that manually, they would sign up maybe on a Sunday night and not get access to that feed until Tuesday. But I have an automation that when people sign up, they automatically get their private feed. Uh, and the other thing is things that you need to do but and, and can't forget, right? So again, this is automatic bill payment. Maybe this is on the opposite side of the coin, right? Like churning out members who um, who aren't paying anymore. Maybe they shouldn't get access to your content anymore. And so you want to automate things like that. 
but you don't want to leave that to your memory because who knows when it gets done then so some examples i i kind of uh left them all throughout but send an email to your mailing list when a new episode drops right this is a common repeatable task uh send an invoice when a contract is signed i'm not doing contracts all the time uh so this this would fall under the uh infrequent but takes a lot of time to do right when i send a contract when someone signs up to be a sponsor it takes a bunch of time out of my day because i need to build the contract and then send the invoice and then send the email uh, give a user access to a private podcast may become a member this is timely uh, or upload videos from dropbox to vimeo this is something i do because my members are the only ones who have access to the live stream and so um when uh when my live streams are over i want to put them in a place that is secure and so i have an automation that is exactly this and so i don't need to remember to do that every time I actually get an email when a new video has been added to Vimeo from Dropbox. So those are uh, some examples. Um, any thoughts on this? Let's. Oh, we've got a bunch of comments. Ashley, thanks for joining. Uh, so excited to see you here. Um, if you have any, if anything you're automating, any questions, let me know. Um, mentioning to Rob, uh, I just overhauled this process acuity and zapier uh and at i don't know what, i don't think i know what at is um considering calendly because i really like sms the, uh, i'll tell you calendly uh for sms is like a killer feature for me like because i get a text message um reminding me to do something right after the interview um so that uh, i don't forget to do it um uh beth is saying just bought a tool a spreadsheet that semi-automates social media posts with chat gpt ooh, that sounds super cool let us know in the chat um what tool that is and, and where people can get it because that sounds uh really interesting and social media posts is like one of those really good things to test the automation waters with um because it's like kind of low stakes um and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it so get into the mindset as we as you start to automate more Think about this. What tasks are you doing that meet one of the four criteria? Frequent and repeatable, infrequent but time-consuming, need to happen at a specific time, or don't want to forget to do it. Uh, this is, I'm going to call it the FIND framework. I didn't plan this. I just noticed it now as I'm reading it. But F-I-N-D, frequent but repeatable, uh, infrequent but time-consuming, need to happen at a specific time, don't want to forget. So this is how you find what to automate. That's how you get into the mindset. And don't just focus on podcasting at first, right? There's, you're probably doing a lot of other stuff, maybe for your day job. Um, if you are self-employed, then you're running other aspects of your business. Your podcast is probably not just your business. But if you think about all the things that you're doing and where you can save time, uh, then this will positively impact the amount of time you can spend on your podcast or on the important business development stuff. I'll tell you that if I hadn't automated my podcast um, or various aspects of my podcast that we'll get into later, uh, I would not be as consistent. I probably wouldn't have sponsors booked through June. Um, and I, I, probably wouldn't have the the following that i have so um earlier this month i hit like eighty thousand downloads and i know i know downloads is not a is not the best metric but i'm also seeing more newsletter signups i'm also seeing more people engage i'm seeing more reviews come in and so uh this is all thanks to my systems okay so now that you're in the mindset Excuse me, I'm going to take a drink of water, uh, Marco Rubio style. All right. Uh, determining, now you're in the mindset. Um, let's determine what you can automate. Uh, here's my four-part framework for that. Make a list of everything that you do. Everything that you do in a day, write it down on a piece of paper uh, or on your iPad or whatever. Type it up in a Notion document. Then ask, 
do I personally need to do this? If the answer is no, ask, does a person need to do this? And then if the answer to that is no, see if there are automation tools that can handle it. So make a list of everything you need to do or that everything that you do do. Ask, do I personally need to do this? Ask, does a person need to do this? And then see if automation tools can do it for you. Let's dive into that. Make a list of everything you do. Skip nothing. Don't think, oh, well, you know, I post to LinkedIn every morning, but like that's, that's, that takes me five minutes, right? Because those five minute tasks, they add up, right? 12 of them are an hour, right? Yes. Um, and so you really need to make it because like, first of all, posting to LinkedIn, that's something my VA handles now, right? And I have an automation process for that as well. Um, so skip nothing. Review your entire routine. If you need to, write things down as you do them, right? Maybe maybe you have a little brain fog and you're like, what, what else do I do? I, I know I'm forgetting something. But, you know, take a couple of days and write down the things that you do. So, like, I'm starting this, this task right now. I checked my inbox. I responded to social media posts, whatever. Um... Time tracking could also help. I'm not going to tell you you need to time track. Just understanding like everything that you do is going to help here. But this is a little bit of homework that you need to do because you want to understand the things that you're doing um, and the things that are taking up your time. Um, I think that that's really important. Um, and then you want what you want to do from there is narrow it down. So um, – Never automate what you can eliminate. Rob, I love that, right? Because this is the other thing too. And this was especially, actually, when I moved from Zapier to Make, this was hugely helpful because there were a couple of things I was automating that I just didn't need to do anymore. And so um, when you make a list of all the things you can do, maybe you realize I'm doing this, but this is similar to this, right? Or I'm doing this, but like I haven't seen a single bit of ROI on this task. So this is the other thing uh, that understanding everything you do um, will help. Never automate what you can eliminate. I love that. Okay. Once you do that, look at each thing and say, do I need to do this? The answer is probably no. Now, that's different from does this need to be done? All right. So... Let's look at, again, my LinkedIn posts. Does this need to be done? Actually, yes. I've gotten a lot of great leads from LinkedIn since I've been posting regularly. It's become an integral part of my lead generation, my top of funnel. Or just connecting with people, right? Not everything needs to be ROI, but I've connected with a lot of cool people too. Do I need to do this? No. For a Yes, I need to write the posts, but I don't need to go in and schedule them. And as a matter of fact, LinkedIn allows you to schedule posts now. So um, everything goes into an Airtable. I put a date. My VA knows to publish those posts. So now instead of scattershot, oh, what's, my, what's that LinkedIn post I want to write today? I already have a back catalog of like 15. And by the way, uh, I'm just looking at old blog posts and podcast episodes and pulling from the transcript, pulling from the show notes and repurposing that. So I'm not even writing new content. I'm reusing content, um, which you should also do. But anyway, do I need to do this? The answer is probably no. And again, this goes back to like letting go of a lot of things. I used to edit my own podcast. I hated it. I realized I don't need to do this. The biggest thing for me was publishing the episodes. I wanted to make sure the show notes were right. I wanted to make sure everything was formatted properly. I wanted to make sure the sponsorship, uh, the sponsor section was correct. When I let that go and I created an SOP for my VA, um, that freed up so much time. And when I'm late on an episode, because sometimes I am, I get sick. I don't have a back catalog. Um, uh, or I don't have like an emergency episode ready to go. Uh, I am reminded 
of how time consuming that process is. So the answer is probably no. I want you to be like uh, Marie Kondo three years ago, like pre-children, right? Because since she's had children, she said she's letting go of that. I understand that completely. I also have, I have three small children. Um, so really, really look at what you're doing and let go of the things that you don't need to do. Um, so let's see. Thank you. Oh, ROI is return on investment. Uh, thanks Beth for that. Um, Chris created a social media tool and system. Nice. Not a SaaS product. It's a one time. Oh, dig it. Are you talking about, uh, our friend Chris Lama here or a different Chris? Um, cool. So do I need to do this? Probably not. Does a person need to do this, right? Posting to WordPress, um, for example, my VA needs to do that because she's looking through the notes I took during the interview, grabbing important links and putting them together. But here are three questions that you can ask yourself to determine if a person needs to do this. Are you sending data between apps? If it's just that, a person doesn't need to do that. A robot can easily do that. Does it require more than just simple decision making? I say that because as you'll see, some automation, like automations can have conditionals and make decisions in a simple form. But if it's like, if it's like some big picture directional decision, like, yeah, a person needs to do that. Um, and that's so important. I actually put it twice. Uh, does it require more than simple decision making? Um, obviously that was a typo. It should just be these two. Um, so does a person, are you sending data between apps? Does it require more than simple decision making? If the answer to this is yes, and the answer to this is no, then you can find the right tools. So once you have, so now you have your list of everything you do and you have filtered it down to, let's say, uh, you probably have a bunch of things you can automate, pick three, two or three, and now you want to find the right tools to help you get the job done. So here are my favorite automation tools. These are the ones that I use the most, as well as alternatives. Make, or formerly Integromat. Uh, Make is great a great affordable connector to lots and lots of services and apps. The way that I send data between a bunch of things is Make. I say, hey, Make, I want watch this trigger in Airtable uh, and then do a few actions in like Google Sheets or whatever. Uh, alternative and probably the more well-known one is Zapier. The reason that I switched from Zapier to Make is because it's like 90% cheaper for more. Um, and so like if you're running like more than five automations in Zapier, uh, you will probably save money by moving over to Make. So just something to think about. Um, and I know like someone got on my case about this, like, uh, I'm not just looking for the cheapest option, right? Like I'm looking for, I use Zapier, so I never have to think about it. Like with Make, I never have to think about it. And also like people don't get rich by flagrantly wasting money, right? Um, and so like this was a reasonable move for me. In instead of paying $75 a month, I am paying $10.59 a month for the same amount of stuff. So something to think about. Uh, next is shortcuts. Uh, this is Siri shortcuts on my phone. I have an iPhone. These are on-device automations that are crucial for interacting with apps. This is this can be my calendar or locking ideas. Um, if you have an Android phone, Google Assistant also has this ability. Uh, number three is Airtable. Airtable is where I store all of my data. This is one of the places we're going to look at my automations. Um, and if you picked up my podcast planners in Airtable, you'll see some of that, right? I have a bunch of automations keying off of different uh, data changes. Um, the alternative is Notion. A lot of people use Notion. I love Airtable. I don't think they're like direct competitors, but they do a lot of the same stuff. Uh, and then finally, Calendly. Uh, this is the easiest way to book, organize, and communicate with guests. An alternative is Savvy Cal. And one I'll be taking a closer look at. I took a look at it when it first came out. 
and I determined that Calendly was still better for me. But one of the big features of Savvy Cal is that you're not just tied to one Google account. So like if you and a team member, for example, uh, have a podcast or you and a co-host, um, you can add both of your calendars to Savvy Cal. So that's, um, and they've really improved their automations through their own workflows. So that's something uh, that I'm going to take a closer look at. Uh, so those are my automation tools. Uh, checking the comments here. Uh, let's see. This is not a SaaS product. Oh, link is above. Um, oh, uh, uh, Chris Castillo, uh, Castillo. I don't think I know that. Um, doing CX right. Uh, looks like maybe that's... Oh, is that Jimmy Rose? Jimmy Rose, are you doing CX right? Um, oh, Jimmy Rose switched to make two is what this says. Um, yeah, so this is a really good point. Uh, I heard about Integromat um, through uh, Jimmy Rose, uh, and he has a whole course on Zapier, so um, it took me a little longer than expected, but I did take a look at it. And he was the first person I heard it from. So, yeah, he's like an automation wizard. Um, and then uh, the unnoticed entrepreneur. Uh, ditto on Calendly. The SMS sequences are appreciated by my guests. Yeah, for sure. That is awesome. Um, thanks for being here, unnoticed entrepreneur, and doing CX right. I don't know if you commented earlier and I missed it, but uh, thanks to everybody being for being in the chat. Uh, if you have questions, let me know. I'll, I'll as you can see, I'm checking periodically. Uh, other automation tools worth mentioning, uh, but we're not going to dive into because they're not like web-based or as universal. Hazel, this is a great app for file management. I posted about it on LinkedIn recently um, and it got a warm reception. So I'll probably do a video on that. Uh, Keyboard Maestro, which uh, allows you to, um, this is again a Mac only app uh, that allows you to create um, your own kind of keyboard shortcut sequences and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, one thing I have it do is uh, I have a podcast button on my stream deck and when I press that it arranges all of my windows um, and like brings up my notes app and GarageBand and Riverside and then resizes them so that like my whole podcast dashboard is set up with the push of a button. Uh, Bunch is a text-based automation tool. I haven't dived really deep into that but really cool. Again you can have like a podcast workflow where it like shuts off Dropbox and Backblaze so that's not using up bandwidth and stuff like that. Um, and then repurpose.io. I mentioned this here because uh, they have a lot of really neat tools for podcasts where they will, uh, for podcasters, where they'll create clips from your show or they'll up, upload your show to YouTube uh, automatically when a new episode is published. Uh, and YouTube is, is, I think, a really important thing for um, podcasters to think about. So we're going to look at my automations uh, next, but I, I do want to give you the, com the components of automation. The first, and we mentioned this earlier, is the trigger. Some event needs to kick off the entire automation. Uh, again, this could be a new file in Dropbox. It could be a form that gets filled out. It could be a specific time of day. Uh, number two is the action or actions. There will always be one trigger for an automation, right? If you need multiple triggers, you need multiple automations, usually. Um, but you can have multiple actions, right? So uh, you can have a single trigger kick off a series of actions. Once an automation is triggered, one or more actions are performed. So a form is filled out, add that data to um, Airtable, and then send me an email that the form has been filled out or create an account for them in my membership site or add them to Dubsado or whatever. Um, Dubsado is probably not very common anymore. I forget the one that my friend Liam uses that he loves. Um, but, uh, you know, add it to my project management tool, right? Uh, number three is conditions. You can check for certain conditions on a, on a trigger um, or actions as well, right? So one example is... Uh, Calendly, the, the trigger is any time an event is filled out uh, for Calendly. So I check the name of the event, and then based on that, I have different automations happen. So that's the condition. It's basically like, is this true? Yes. Do this. If it's not, do this other set of actions. 
Uh, and then timing. You can have certain automations run immediately, uh, or you can run them at specific intervals. So something that I learned with Make was um, basically every step of an automation counts as its own operation. And I was hitting my operation limit pretty um, uh, pretty fast because I was having all of my automations run every 15 minutes, even though all of my automations don't need to run every 15 minutes. So um, one automation I have is to look at my email inbox for Haro, that's help a reporter, uh, help a reporter out, uh, look for Haro requests that mention podcaster or podcasting, and then add that to a, a Google Sheet. Uh, that only needs to run once a day because I'm checking it in the morning. And so it checks it at night after the last, um, that automation runs once at like 7.30 after the last horror request for the day has been sent out. So timing is, is an important thing too. Okay, it's example time. Let me uh, do this while I move to a different browser. I'll also check for questions or comments. Um, all right, let's see. Ooh, lots of stuff here. Uh, Ashley says, okay, so I think I was holding on to the fact that I want to uh, active campaign for blasting out automated guest emails. However, uh, I can see a workaround using Calendly. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I send most of my emails, those emails with Calendly. Um, thanks for hosting. No worries. Uh, unnoticed entrepreneur, you can catch the replay. Uh, at the same link and uh thanks ashley uh the, i gotta give all the credit to uh <laughs> to um canva like their slides are amazing uh okay so let me uh bring up chrome because that's what i'm logged into here okay uh so let me know if you can uh see this screen okay i'll make it bigger that's a little too big. Um, actually, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'll put my head in the bottom corner. Um, so here are some automations in Airtable I have. Uh, one is guest management. So um, I have, uh, I don't know if I want to. So I have this guest applications tab. Uh, so um, when someone, yeah, that's not really what I wanted to do. Uh, when someone fills out this form, it gets added to a Kanban board, uh, and then I can either uh, reject or accept them. And so uh, one of the things I do is for guest management, if I uh, set their status to guest accepted, they get an email telling them, hey, you've been accepted. Here's what you applied to speak for. Um, here's how you can schedule. Same thing with rejection. There's an email that says like, hey, here are the reasons you might have been rejected. Uh, sorry, maybe next time. Um, I also have guest outreach here. So uh, this is a really fun one. Um, I want to, let me, uh, let me do this so I don't accidentally. Um, oh, I must have prepped this for, I must have prepped this already. Um, so I have people that I want to have on my show um, with a bunch of uh, information, their email address is hidden, um, personal note, and then when I set this to ready to send, um, I have an automation that builds the email and sends it to them from my Gmail account. So what this allows me to do is spend about 15 or 20 minutes um, making a list of people that I want to have on my show and then send 10 or 20 emails all at once, uh, which is a big time saver here because um, I'm not crafting all of those emails individually or uh, or. I'm not like using a text expander snippet where I still have to fill it all out, right? So it's a lot quicker uh, than having to send a bunch of individual emails. Um, I have automations uh, to uh, schedule the episode. Um, these statuses are updated to make, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I have an automation to have my VA create cover art. I'll clean up the database from time to time. Um, and so these are some of the things that I'm doing in Airtable. Uh, this is mostly like record management and, and sending emails. Over in Meek, uh, I have a lot of stuff going on. So let's look at my Calendly router. I feel like that's probably the most interesting one. 
Um, so this is my this is my guest management flow. First, I have make watch Calendly events. Uh, when a new one comes in, this is immediately as data arrives, right? So it's whenever someone fills out the the any of my Calendly events. I'll uh, hide myself. Actually, I'll do this. Um, once they, once this happens, I get the event that comes through because of the name of the event or the name of the calendar is not sent. So I need to get that name because then I have a router. This is the conditional stuff. So if it's a playbook one-on-one, -on -one, this is something that my members, get, like people who buy the extended playbook, get a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. Uh, and they get a special link. So if they fill this out, they get tagged in ConvertKit because I have a uh, reminder campaign for every three months. They get reminded like, hey, you bought the extended playbook, but you haven't taken advantage of the one-on-one -on -one call yet. Um, just so you know, like that expires in six months or whatever. So once they book it, they get taken out of that sequence. That's what this is. Uh, the rest is for how I built it. So I have uh, a... Google Doc template. So uh, this is basically a bunch of smart tags. Maybe I can bring this up for you real quick. Uh, let's see. Guest. Let's say I called it guest template. Nope, I definitely didn't. Um, but what this does is uh, takes a like simple template that I created. Here we go. Show notes template. Uh, so you can see it uses like these curly braces. So name, email, topic, um, and make knows to take these and treat them as uh, like fill in the blanks. And then um, so it assigns uh, name, email, topic to the stuff that the guest filled out. And you can see Chris Davis, for example, um, sorry, Chris, if I just exposed your email address there, um, this is what it looks like filled out, right? So now I have a show notes document, uh, that my VA can take and, and, and build out from. And then that information is also added to Airtable with the same information and then a link to the Google doc. So I know in Airtable, um, on the day we record, I can just click that link. And I have the show notes, I have the sponsor and the episode numbers and things like that. So this is my guest router. Um, some of the other ones I have here, here's the horror request one I just talked about. Uh, create a new uh, create a new Airtable entry from a Google Doc. So uh, this is kind of the reverse of what I had before. Whenever I get an idea for new social media content, I add a document to a, a, a folder called so, like social posts. Um, and then that gets added to Airtable so my VA knows to take that content and post it on LinkedIn. Uh, whenever a new episode is published, this is a good one actually, um, whenever a new episode is published on the How I Built It feed, uh, update the Airtable record to, to mark it as aired. So if I go back to Airtable so you can see what we're working with. Um, and this will be the last one I walk through and then we can open it up to questions. But um, if we look at the episodes here, right? So we can see upcoming guests and then all of the, these are all statuses. Um, and so one is published and then that's marked as aired. And so we don't see the, the aired ones. We only see the upcoming ones. Um, so this is a nice way for, again, for me to keep the, the view clean so that I'm only looking at what's coming up and not, everything that's been published. I also have a creative post on castabundant.org. Like everything I publish uh, also gets published on castabundant.org. So that's like a content hub for me. Um, podcast audit order. This is a good one. So uh, I do have a podcast audit uh, where people can buy it using ConvertKit. Uh, ConvertKit doesn't send emails when someone purchases a product. So I had it I set this up to do that. So um, when someone purchases a product, they get tagged. When that tag is added, I get an email just notifying me, right? That, hey, 
uh, someone purchased this and now you have seven days to do it. So um, send Asana tasks. So there's a lot of stuff here, right? Um, some of the really good ones that I didn't get to actually. Um, update episode status in Airtable. So when I drop a new folder into, I have a in Dropbox. I have a folder called needs editing. Um, and I don't know how well you can see this, uh, but each of these folders has an episode number and a guest name. And so when I drop this folder into needs editing, um, I grab the episode number from the name. I update Airtable to set the status to needs editing. And then my editor gets an email. And then similarly, when he adds that episode, that edited episode back into Dropbox, same thing. The status is updated in Airtable uh, to add to WordPress and my VA gets an email. So um, basically, once I'm done recording a podcast episode, I never I don't see it again until it uh, until it um, hits my RSS feed. So, uh, Calendly got to run. Beth, thanks for being here. You talked about it costing you about $10.50 a month to use these tools. Can you explain that? Um, yeah, I can get into that. Um, well, I mean, that's the monthly cost to use Make, right? So, Make.com uh, has a free account, but they also have um, a pro account, and that's based on number of operations. So, you can get started for free. The same thing with Zapier. I think you get two zaps for free uh, and then you need to start paying for it. So um, I also pay for Airtable. That's about 240 bucks a year. Um, and that like my business relies on that, but that you can also get started for free. The nice thing about all of these tools uh, is that you can get started for free. So um, that was a quick rundown of uh, my automations. Before we get into the uh, questions and answers, my mission is to help people become profitable podcasters. I want you to be able to pay your bills with your podcast and workflow is only part of the battle. It's a big part, right? Because these automations for this webinar, I said like save 10 hours a month. I save about 20 hours a month. Um, because podcasting can feel like a marathon that you're sprinting, a time suck. It could feel like you're yelling into the void. It could feel like you're just wasting money, like you're stagnating and it can feel really hard, uh, to do well. Right. And, um, I've been podcasting for 10 years and I can tell you, it doesn't have to feel that way. I love podcasting. I've been making money since day one. Like I had a sponsor for my first episode ever. Um, but because I have these systems in place, uh, podcasting has always been a joy, a boon. It hasn't, it hasn't felt like a grind for me. Um, and so I wanted to take everything that I know and put it into, um, what I call the podcast liftoff playbook. And so this is, uh, I, I basically call it a masterclass, but for podcasters, this is every video I've ever created. Uh, for podcasting and so you can learn things like how to find sponsors how to price sponsorships the right call to action there's a whole section on automating specific tools uh, like Riverside and Calendly and Zapier um, and there's basically everything that I've ever learned about how to be a profitable podcaster I put into the playbook um, and it comes with, again, videos. These are just in time learning videos, but uh, they're broken up into collections so you can treat them as a self paced course. There are PDFs and resources. Uh, you know, there's my automations library, there's a podcast launch checklist, there's an episode launch checklist, and all of these systems that I've put together to help me. And I know that they can help you too. So, with the playbook, you will learn how to batch your content and stay consistent. Learn how to be more comfortable in front of a microphone. You'll learn how to grow your downloads and your mailing list subscribers. You'll learn how to make money more than just sponsorships, but you'll also learn how to price sponsorships. You'll learn how to reduce long-term costs and you'll learn so much more. One of the cool things about the playbook is that you'll also get access to 
all of my automations in Zapier. So there you get access to um, this database of links that I've shared only with members of the playbook so that if you want to recreate any of my automations, you click on that link, you add it to your account, um, and then you can you can make modifications there. So uh, this is, I've done all the work for you and I'm sharing it with members of the playbook. Um, one of the cool things is that uh, if you do get the, the level with the one-on-one -on -one call for me, uh, you'll also get your own dedicated page in the playbook where we talk about next steps. You'll have the Zoom call recording, and then I will recommend some videos for you based on what we talked about. So there's that higher touch, right? If you're struggling with one specific thing, um, then I, I will work with you on that thing, and I'll give you the resources so that you don't need to go sifting through the playbook yourself. Um, so with, with the extended playbook, Aside from just the videos, there are these live events that I try to do monthly. Uh, there's one-on-one -on -one coaching, and then there's like higher touch email support as well, where you get your own email inbox, uh, and I, I prioritize those emails. Coming up in March is the automation boot camp, right? So this is a six-hour boot camp, three hours live, three hours pre-recorded. Um, but I'll like be in the chat as you're watching it. We'll have like a go live kind of party um, where will build out specific automations using Zapier and Make. So like the next logical step from this webinar, um, I'll show you how to adapt my automations to your workflows. We'll do live challenges. Maybe you can even recommend or request I build a, a uh, an automation and we'll see how far I get. And then we'll have live Q and A's. This six hour bootcamp is something that I would normally sell for $599. Um, but because you attended this webinar, I want to give you a special offer. So that special offer uh, is you get $70 off the podcast liftoff playbook at any level. So um, the $529, the extended playbook, gets you the live events, um, the, the email access, the one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. By the way, a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me now is $500. Bucks. So um you're basically getting the playbook for $29. Uh, but you'll also get the podcast automation bootcamp for free. So uh, you're saving a bunch of money that way. Um, and if you go to podcastliftoff.com slash automate, you can make that purchase. Uh, the uh, coupon code should be applied automatically. Um, and uh, you'll get a whole bunch of other fun stuff too. You'll automatically be registered for the bootcamp. Um, but it expires on Saturday. So you'll get an email reminder after this, but uh, you, you need to act now if you want to take advantage of that offer. And one more thing, as my friend Colombo would say, the price of the playbook is going up to $1,000 in March, right? Um, because like I said, I'm basically giving away hours and hours worth of content or I'm giving away a coaching call. So um, this is an even better offer for you because this is the last webinar where I'm running uh, this discount at this price. So uh, you'd save up to like $1,300, $1,340 if you take advantage of the price now. Um, so wanted to put that in front of you. Thank you so much for attending. Um, and I guess now the only question is, are there any questions? All right. Ooh, lots of stuff. Love a good smart tag. That's Impressive workflow. Thank you, Unnoticed Entrepreneur. Um, Maria, these automations are beautiful, but wow, my brain hurts. What's the simplest way uh, to start for those of us without a techie brain? What a great question. I would say um, look at your list of the things that you do um, and see if there's some place where you're sending data from one place to another, right? Um, I think that is... If you want to start with like Zapier or Make, that's a really good place to start, right? So maybe someone fills out a Google form that you want to move to Airtable, or uh, maybe someone fills out a Google form that you want to put into a Google Doc. Um, the other thing that you can do is look at text expansion tools like Text Expander. Uh, I'm a big fan of Text Expander. Um, you, you, it's basically little keyboard shortcuts uh, for full text. So. That's a form of automation, right? Because it's doing, it's taking what you need to do and making it simpler. But um, 
if we look at my list of automations again here, um, I think probably some of the simpler ones are um, create a new Airtable entry from a Google Doc, uh, look at um, put emails like email triage, right? Because this is basically a Gmail search and then any emails they put into a Google Sheet. Um, the podcast audit order so you you would connect uh you would connect your convert kit account or mailchimp or active campaign um and then look through that list of triggers if a tag is added send me an email right um these one or two step automations are the things that'll help you get into the mindset and so the main question to ask yourself here is um what am i doing what am i doing manually and what can the, what can I get the robot to do for me? If if that makes sense. So um, this could be if you're is probably my best advice there. Uh, happy pill pop. Uh, me too. Um, unnoticed entrepreneur says this is award winning. Thank you very much. Um, are there any? Uh, first of all, uh, Maria, does that make sense? Um, did I answer your question, or uh, is there another way? Uh, that you want to phrase it to maybe elicit a, in a, a different response from me. Um, let me know, and I'm happy to uh, rephrase it. But I think um, I think when it comes to to automation, uh, you know, keyboard shortcuts, right? Like through Text Expander, or if you are again, if you're moving data from one place to another, um, those are the two things that you'll probably be able to. Um, uh, to automate the best because uh, I guess the way I, sh I could put it right is um, you want to know the exact start start state of something you want, right? So a tag is added to an email subscriber. Great. I know the start state um, or a new episode is added to my podcast feed. Okay, great. I know the start and you want to know the end state as well. So, um, maybe it's a user gets an email letting them know there's a new podcast episode. Great. So now I know the result. Even better, ConvertKit will do that for you automatically. You grab your podcast feed, you connect it to ConvertKit. ConvertKit will automatically put together the emails for you. Um, so that's, I guess maybe that's the other thing. Look at the tools you're already using and see if they allow certain automations. So um, again, ConvertKit has like automated sequences. It has RSS um, and it will allow you to, uh, to um, you know, connect those things relatively easily. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, unnoticed entrepreneur, do you have any experience with Zoho? That's one platform which has multiple apps inside one domain. Um, I don't, I know it's, uh, pretty much an affordable version. I mean, I have some experience, but not in the context of automation. Um, so I have, um, played with it, but I haven't tried automating with it. Uh, it does look like a really nice tool. Zoho CRM has always been the thing that I tend to go back to because um, when I want to use like a real CRM uh, and not one I like put together with like toothpicks and rubber bands, um, Zoho has always been like the most affordable one. And I look at that because I know I'm probably not going to use it very long. Right. It doesn't make sense for me to use Salesforce because like, I don't, I don't use Salesforce. Um, so that was a long winding answer to say like, yes, but not in the context of automation. Um, Maria, yes, that helps basically start with smaller steps and then build up to avoid overwhelm, uh, define the trigger first step and the result. Yeah, that's exactly right. And this is another thing from, um, this is like another kind of like programming mindset, I think, but it's also a productivity mindset, right? Um, when you look at a project in project management, um, you don't say, okay, I'm going to build a house, right? You say, all right, uh, we're going to, uh, dig a ditch for the basement, unless I live in Florida. Um, then I'm going to pour the concrete 
right? Then I'm going to stand up the skeleton. Um, so yeah, break even bigger tasks, break down into smaller tasks. Um, because what this does is it, it lets you see each step, but then it also reduces the chance of failure, right? Um, and I've had pretty complicated automations that have failed. And then I had to spend time troubleshooting where that failure happened. So definitely start small, break bigger tasks into smaller ones. And yeah, understand like the, the first step, the trigger exactly. And then what should happen because then you can easily test and verify. Um, yeah. So awesome. Thanks so much. All right. I will, I know there's probably like a 30 second delay. Uh, so I will wait about another 30 seconds if any more questions come in. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much everybody for, um, coming to this webinar be sure to check out um, the special offer. Uh, I really think that this is this is the best deal I've offered in one of these webinars because, again, the price is doubling, um, but also like the podcast automation bootcamp uh, is definitely the highest value live co cohort I've run in the playbook so far. So um, I'm really excited for this one. People tend to be uh, pretty keen on automation. And I'm really excited to lean into it because I love uh, I love automating stuff. Ooh, uh, another question came in from uh, Monica. Thanks for being here. Are there CRMs that combine a lot of these instead of having multiple programs? As a photographer, there are CRMs that automate. Are there CRMs aimed at podcasters? That's a really great question. Um, I think the closest like all-in-one tool for podcasters is probably uh, Alitu by the podcast host. Um, you know, Riverside is pretty focused on the content st stuff. Um, I think the reason that I would combine some of those tools with a Make or a Zapier is because let's say you have your own website, right? You know, I have, I have multiple websites. Um, and so there's no easy way for me to directly connect to them without using something like Make or Zapier. Um, I'm also a big fan of like the uh, one job per tool thing. Um, so, you know, I've tried, like I was a WordPress developer for years. Uh, and so like I've tried building my entire business inside of WordPress, um, CRM, sales funnel, invoicing, and I'm just like, there are better tools that handle this better where the owners of those tools have domain knowledge. So, um, you know, there are CRMs uh, for photographers. I think that's great, right? Probably built by photographers who really understand this. Um, I don't know that there are, I don't know of any good CRMs that are specifically aimed at podcasters, though. Great question, though. Thank you for that. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, this is very this is well attended, and I appreciate it. Um, Monica, you know, I will uh, I'll, I'll look into that. That's a really interesting question. So um, you're on the email list now. You have my email address. Um, if you don't hear back from me, uh, either just like via a newsletter or whatever, uh, follow up with that question again, because that's really, that's really interesting. But um, thanks so much uh, to everybody for coming to this webinar. This will be available until Saturday. Then it is going, um, then it's going into the playbook with all of the other webinars. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions, let me know. You can email me, joe at casabona.org. You'll be getting a link to this replay very shortly. Uh, but until then, I'll see you later and 